This is my Canon Legria HR R46, which is the camera which has been filming the last 150 or so episodes on this channel. And uh, it uh, quite frankly is a camera which I've been disappointed with from the beginning to the now. However, it ran out of warranty a few days ago. And the biggest by far issue with this camera is the fact that the microphones are some of the worst I've ever heard. In fact, I have taken a crude measurement off of them, and they have a high pass filter at about 250 hertz for some reason beyond me. And uh, as regular viewers might be able to tell, I sound completely different on this cheapo camera. And that's really not something you should expect out of something you actually pay three times the price for. But since we are now out of warranty, I figured we'd give it a bit of a try taking it apart and perhaps remedying the issue. So I did do a bit of a mistake when purchasing this camera in that it doesn't have an external microphone jack. I couldn't find a pr camera in my price range back then which had and didn't have some other severe drawback. So I'm stuck with the internal microphones. But uh, this thing seems to be reasonably easy to get apart. It's got some quite accessible screws around the sides and bottom. So it might not be too hard to do something about it. So we need to determine the nature of the issue. Is it the microphone drivers which are just insufficient, too small and unable to pick up the lower frequencies? Or are they coupled through some tiny capacitors? Do they have just some filters on them? And in the worst case it might just be a software limitation. But given this camera's behavior when choosing different equalizer settings, I don't think it's going to be a software issue. I'm a lot more inclined to believe that it's going to be a hardware issue. So, let's try and get this thing apart. So looking around the internet, I haven't been able to track down anyone else trying to take one of these apart, so this might be an internet first. And uh, looking at this thing, I can kind of see why, because there's no obvious way that this camera is going to come apart. Uh, we do have this uh, matte grey piece of plastic which uh, seems to make up most of the lower body of the camera. And then we also have the, the shiny part which makes up the front and... Uh, uh, so that joint, it might be, it might just be a little detail. But uh, either way, one of these parts is going to have to separate from the other. I'm hoping we won't have to completely obliterate the screen, that would be pointless since for once on a camcorder with a rot rotatable screen it hasn't gone all wonky because the cable's broken although it might be well on its way because this thing's seen quite some mileage and anyway, at this stage I think I'm just going to start removing random screws and uh, we'll see what happens On a side note, I did get the red XS165 because it was the cheapest at a whooping 107 euros. And uh, having a general look at uh, how this thing performs with video, I am feeling even more disappointed than I was before by the R46 because. The R46 does have more zoom, which I don't care much about. Uh, but uh, And it does have a 1080p recording, which I don't care much about. But uh, aside from those facts, the performance is stunningly similar. More than anything, I would say that I'm impressed by the uh, memory card I bought with this thing, since uh, it's uh, survived, actually. It's probably seen... Uh, must be approaching 100 gigabytes of uh, writes 
And I only have one memory card for this thing. It's a Kingston 32 gigabyte, I believe. This is starting to get a bit loose. Hmm. Kind of feels like it wants to come off, but it's not filling me with any kind of confidence. Not in the slightest. I'd rather not break any plastic snaps on this thing. That would be a bit of a bummer, since, as you can see, it's in pretty good nick otherwise. I don't put much wear on my things. I'm a buy-to-keep kind of person, so I generally don't wear things out. This doesn't seem to be coming apart. Does this thing pop out? Uh, doesn't feel like it. And this is a 2013, 2012 model, so it's probably got some snaps in it. I would expect nothing less. But I don't like being a beta tester on my own products, especially not ones which I use on a daily basis. Oh, is that a hidden screw there? I think that might be a hidden screw. Yep, yeah, there we go. Gotcha. This is going to be... Oh yeah, that felt good. That felt excellent. Oh yeah, now we're getting somewhere. Let me just put this screw aside so I don't forget it. Now we're getting somewhere. We're opening the hood. Well, that came off quite neatly. Is this going... Yeah, this is definitely good. Well, hey, look at that. I think... I think that might be the microphone connector. I think that might be the microphone connector. Would not be surprised. Man, if that... This thing actually looks accessible. So what we have, it seems... This, I would assume, is the internal memory, which uh, makes up the difference between the... Legria H... Uh, oh, this thing between the HF, HF R46 and the HF R406. I think the 406 might uh, not have an internal uh, Wi-Fi module either. However, that's a complete wank feature. It uh, doesn't even work on this one because you can't get the app for it anymore. And I, I can't use it because I don't have a smartphone. Anyway. I need to figure out a way to... Is this going to pop off? Hmm. I wouldn't be surprised if they're hiding screws underneath these. In fact, I would... I would almost bet that they do. They are screwing with us. That's a screw. So... That really important little bit there, I really hope that's going to go back. Because I wouldn't want to be without those, it's going to scratch my screen up really bad. And the question is, is if, do I have a screw there too? Yeah, we do. Ugh. What a bother. I hate it when they do this. Screws under vital, brittle rubber components. In fact, I should just uh, get some little fluffy strips, I'm not certain what you would call them, like felt strips and just line this entire area with them. That would prevent dirt and crap getting in there as well. Do we have a screw there too? That wouldn't really make any sense. Well, oh, that seems clean as... Well, no, that's clean. By the way, I'm uh, sorting all the screws out according to the layout of the camcorder off screen so that I uh, have uh, some kind of shot at actually getting this thing back together again. We have several different uh, sizes of screw already. Most of them are metal threaded, but uh, they could all seem to be plastic threaded ones which go to the front bezel there. And why is this top part going to pop off now? It's always fun to see what makes these things tick. Oh, that's made. A horrifying click noise. I don't 
don't like the sound of that, to be honest. I wonder if I might have to undo that screw there. This is very loose now. Very loose now, so I'm going to have to undo these uh, flat flexes. I'm not certain how to get the other flat flex off of there. It almost looks like one of those which just uh, slide in with no real locking mechanism. Yeah, seems not to, seems as if it isn't a ziff. I do not like those. They have a tendency to break. Yeah, that's stuck in there good. Well, it did move though. I'll just try and wiggle it. There we go. Top cover comes off. Ah, there we go. We have a screw holding the front bezel on. That would have gotten me in trouble if I tried to force it, so let's get that out of the way. And uh, remember where it goes. It's kind of in front there. Oh. Oh, yeah. Oh, would, would you believe it? That is the microphone cable there. That is the microphone cable. So that should just pop off and we'll be able to do a bit of research on how this thing operates. There we go. Camera shutter assembly. Okay. This might be manual, I kind of like this. It has a good feel to it. I can just install this here and have a proper manual shutter action of my normal camera. <laughs> so that's the main attraction. That came apart a lot easier than I had anticipated. And that's the lens assembly there. Looking all shiny and nice. Hey, there's the flat flex for the flip flip display. Hmm, that that looks a bit worn. <laughs> Oh yeah, man, that is, that is not new. That's been rubbing against something. So the mechanism is, oh yeah, wow, that's, that's not, that's not a nice solution to that. Geez, look how that falls. You, wow. Yeah, that's, that's going to have to be replaced at some stage. Unless I get another camcorder first. Jeesh. Now that seems to be one of these super complex flat flexes which go through half a border device. Yuck. You can't see how the rotation works, but uh, it's probably not much better. It's probably just this flat flex perhaps splitting up and keeping going on straight. Yuck. Well, that's crappy. Fairly disappointed. I was hoping it would be one of those laptop style uh, metal cased uh, loose conductor type of jobs which should tend to last a lot longer than flat flexes. And there's the internal battery in case it ever needs to be replaced and uh, yeah, process the bottom of the bottom. It always does get warm around here and uh, the rest of it is basically optics it seems. Hmm. This thing should actually power on quite well when it's taken apart like this. All we're missing is uh, the uh, zoom and record buttons there. Hmm. Now oh, there's this peaker. Oh well, we've got an IC there. <laughs> well, that seems a bit pointless. We've got one button there. Another piece of potentiometer. Sheesh. That might be an encoder. This does have a stepless zoom, so you can zoom slowly or quickly, which the compact Xs doesn't have, but that's to be expected when you're comparing such a more expensive camera to a cheaper one. Anyway, let's uh, try and figure these microphones out. So the microphones seem to be mounted underneath the 
the lens shutter assembly, which seems to come off with this plastic threaded screw there. And it's just going to pop out. Yeah. It isn't even exploding to a million pieces. Seems to be held together with the little snapping locks around the sides. Pretty neat little construction. And uh, those, that would be our microphones. So, let's see what we can do. So, do these just, yeah, that shield pops out like so. And we've got our microphones. Oh, pop. Oh, yeah. Seem to have just two wires each. Going to a two, four wire plug there, so we're just entirely separate mics. Now I wonder if the issue might be related to the microphone holes. I wonder how it sounds if you just uh, hook it up with without this. I mean, it should fire up just fine without it, since there's no actual electronics in it, there's no feedback for the uh, shutter or anything. In fact, if you start the camera with a shutter close, it will just uh, present a pop-up which says uh, check whether the lens cover is open. Ha ha, thank you Canon. Thank you for not giving me a solenoid. Anyway, I need to get uh, this thing back on in order to be able to do a test recording. So I'll uh, do that and we'll see if I don't need to install it uh, too properly. Maybe just uh, need to get the flat, flat flexus in. That seems to be Relatively easy. We'll just poke. I hate these non ziff flat flexes. They are devil's work. This is one of the worst ones, too, since you don't even get any proper place to push it in. You just have to kind of bend it and force it. Really risking to break it. Definitely don't want to disconnect that any more than we need to. This is a proper SIF socket though. We should just slide in with zero insertion force. Oh, there we go. So if I put the battery in this, it uh, should just fire up. Oh, oh we've got a rubber ring around there. So let's see what this thing does. I don't even need to use a battery on it. That's actually a big advantage of this uh, proper video camera over the compact I'm using. It uh, does support running off of an AC adapter. So, uh... Oh, that's a power LED. Wait, it's changed something. It's, lo it's lost its settings. Oh, right, because we disconnected the uh, battery there. So this has reset to the defaults. Oh well. Come on, give me English. English. See the firmware on this thing is entirely stupid. Yeah, fine, it's 2013. ABC HD, thank you very much. No, oh, yeah, we want to use the SD card, we'll put it in later. Fetus, internal, fine. I hope it didn't forget my <laughs> for forget how to uh, use my photos because I do have some old photos on this internal memory. In a way, let's uh, shove my old SD card in there and see if we can record something and if it sounds any different than uh, doing it uh, normally and I need to set it to 24, 25 frame mode it isn't 25 frame mode, why is it uh, high quality this is a bit weird actually It's uh, you can't see this but it's running the screen in 50 frames per second. It's never done that before. I let it set to 50 frame recording. That that's really weird. 
it's probably some uh, setting somewhere I want to show the audio level indicator auto levels fine so let's just uh, start recording and uh, plug the microphone in and see what it does it's really weird it shouldn't be updating at 50 frames so this goes in like so got a bit of a pop on the audio meter hello can you hear me hello testing audio hello can you hear me hello testing audio I'm now speaking directly into the ETI microphone connected to this Canon Allegria HF R46 camcorder and I'm now speaking from behind it as I usually am I'm now holding the microphones in their usual position in front of the lens assembly well that should do it well that's ended up being the same as it always has so what I'm curious to find out now is if we, these are condenser microphones and if we uh, would have any uh, bias voltage across them if we do then I could just uh, replace them with any other microphone capsule I've uh, got lying around which uh, could potentially result in vastly imp improved audio quality in the end I'm probably just going to add an external microphone input to this thing but uh, we'll see we'll fire it back up so give me an audio yeah yeah audio meter reading thank you so uh, do we have any bias voltage across these yeah we do 1.42 volts across that one and 1.39 over that one so we do have some kind of bias voltage so by chance I happen to have a, a rather large box of these uh, Denon Odyssey calibration microphones which uh, are supposedly quite flat from about uh, 20 hertz to 20 kilohertz within a couple of decibels anyway so if uh, the issue is uh, the condenser drivers themselves then uh, just connecting one of these instead uh, should uh, provide a quite severe improvement in performance if it doesn't uh, then we might have to look at uh, for instance these uh, decoupling caps there if they're just uh, not uh, large enough to provide good low frequency coverage but I'll start by just uh, desoldering one of these uh, microphones and uh, soldering this thing in instead that's very hot ouch but uh, there we go that should be a proper big microphone connected up so let's uh, give it a go and we're pairing up and it was shooting in 50p before which is really weird I don't know how to make it stop doing that oh there we go 15 to last 25 progressive thank you very much that's more like it right let's uh, shoot a proper beautiful test video does it a proper beautiful test video does it hello i'm now speaking quite directly into a microphone it's probably going to pop like mad so let's uh, try and aim my voice away from it slightly i'm now about uh, 40 centimeters away from the microphone and I need to remember to just uh, play back one channel for this clip because the other microphone is still the original which is handy so we have a proper reference oh, there we go okay so what well, that uh, test quite obviously shows is that uh, it's uh, not an issue with the microphone so although it could also be an issue with microphones but uh, not mainly the microphones because we've clearly got uh, some kind of high pass filtering going on in the actual camera so my next bet would be that these uh, coupling cap caps here are a bit tinier than they should be and uh, that's a bit of a bother because I don't have any suitable SMD caps in stock they seem to be 0402s so it's going to get real ugly if I try to do anything about that. Huh. I'm going to have to have a ponder about this. Alright, I had a bit of a closer look at this uh, configuration here and uh, 
It seems that these caps aren't uh, coupling caps at all. Or rather they are, but uh, they are making up a low pass filter rather than a high pass filter. Because uh, we seem to have ground in pins 1 and 3 there going to a ground plane that's surrounding this uh, microphone connector which is then separated from the rest of the ground plane by these two brown ceramic caps off to the side, the other one being below the IC there to the right. So, unless there's something more insidious going on, those two might have something to do with the high-pass filtering that this camera is applying, although they do look more like a suppression caps than coupling caps. But, uh, these are a bit more easy to access, so I might just try and uh, put a 100 nano cap across one of them and uh, see if it makes a difference. If it doesn't, uh, it's not looking good because those traces are snaking their way deep into the guts of a camera. There we go. Put a one microfarad mega cap in there for testing purposes, since this is very low voltage stuff. Uh, I would expect the original caps to be somewhere around this range. This one's just giant because it's a 50 volt cap, but uh, I'll give it a go. Hook it up to record test, see if it sounds any different. This is a test with the one microfarad extra cap installed. But alas, uh, the more I dig into this, the more hopeless it seems to get. Uh, so I figured out that uh, microphone enters here, it goes through the uh, low pass filter. These four caps are coupled in two in parallel. Uh, then uh, the direct line to the output jack runs to this little IC which doesn't have enough pins to really have anything to do with the audio, so I'm quite certain this is the current uh, limiting whatever uh, device designed to provide the bias voltage for the microphones. But uh, that's about all I can see, because the traces just do not go anywhere. Uh, beyond that you just have the ground going across here, and curiously shorting these uh, two caps out so the ground actually is DC coupled, I'm not entirely certain what these two are even doing here because they're shorted out so the actual audio traces have to be travelling in some internal layer if I look at the other side of the board there's just a, a, a ground on this side which goes straight to the chassis so yeah, we've got audio going in internal layers to some other place on the board and uh, Getting this board out is uh, starting to become a quite major project. Uh, we've got lots of processing going on with uh, cell pads cooling the stuff to the heatsink, so... <sighs> I think I'm actually going to frame the towel in uh, fixing the frequency response issue. Uh, since it's just going away into the unit, I would wager that it's probably going pretty straight into a Canon uh, custom IC probably straight into the Digic 4 processor and the high pass filtering is hmm, pretty fair chance it's being done in software so that's a real bummer but at least we got to see the insides of a camera and now that I've got it apart and you know we have this easy access to the microphone and since I almost always use this camera from the behind Perhaps I can at least add a backwards facing microphone by just uh, running a cable 8 through there and hot snotting something to the top of it. That would at least give it some kind of an improvement over what we've got now. And uh, about an hour later we've got a prototype rear facing microphone going. So I felt uh, particularly inspired by religious practices, so I just used a rusty knife to cut the tip off of this uh, Odyssey mic and uh, at the moment it's just taped onto the camcorder, I just did a quick test and uh, it's uh, really just uh, connected uh, up instead of uh, one of the internal microphones which uh, is uh, not no longer present so 
Uh, yeah, the initial test sounded good to me. It sounded a lot better than my normal videos, actually. It's so real. No, the effect was basically, um, I'll try to show you, that uh, no matter how you turn the camera, as long as you're not uh, facing directly sideways, uh, you actually come through quite uh, clearly. And uh, it actually turned out way, way better than my expectations. And uh, since the camera does a little mono down mixing thing, it. Uh, even sounded relatively good without me manually down mixing it to mono. Hmm. So, I think I'm actually happy enough to uh, reassemble this properly. Uh, I'll uh, probably hot glue this onto here. It's not as if this uh, camera seats a very hard life, it just sits in a tripod all day. And uh, we'll do proper test recording. Hmm. Exciting. A quick design note on this camcorder before I put it completely together. Now, this is the DC input jack, which is a silly proprietary connector. But uh, on the plus side, it's actually through-hole mounted, so it might have a chance to actually survive some abuse. Which is nice, I was expecting to be SMD and to fall off in a short notice. Alright, it's time for the first post-reassembly power-up. Everything's uh, looking pretty good, no parts left over except for the old mic. So, let's see if we have a shot. Yeah, you reset again. I really do not like the UI on this thing. But we have some audio there. Do we have it on both mics? We've got the backwards facing one, and uh, front. I think we do have two microphones going. Except one's turned the other way. Hmm. Sweet, so now all I've got to do is... Uh, uh, probably main to this is just taped down at the moment, and uh, we'll have to give it a proper test recording. I'm actually a bit excited. Right, I've... Uh, Covered up the lens assembly and rudimentarily tacked down the microphone driver there and uh, now I'm just going to apply a bit of hot glue because it's cheap and cheerful and plentiful and uh, tack this down a bit. Doing my best to keep this area flat because it's handy to just set the camera down. That should just about cover it, now I just need to wait until this has cooled down and I can see my battery indicator flashing on this camera, so we'll be back in a while. Alright, this is a test recording with a new microphone set up. So uh, this is the camera I've been filming the uh, previous part of the episode with. Episode, I'm not a TV series, cheapo, Ixus 165. 107 euros new. I'm quite happy with uh, the features of it. The manual doesn't uh, tell you about it, but uh, you, you can actually be reasonably manual with it. But it's a cheap camera. Again, 107 euros. Does good video, apparently. And here's some of the stuff I used to make the pop filter on the microphone. Because if I blow... Yeah, it still shoots up. It's quite loud, but there's a little white pop filter on the microphone so it should do some good at least and here's a selfie of a new camera and me with a little hump of a microphone there pointing backwards so here's to hoping this sounds okay because I obviously haven't listened to this yet and with that I think it's about time I'll let this video come to an end so I'll leave you with this shot of my main camera arsenal, including a cheapo Canon 1000D with the horrible kit lens which took the pictures of the camera you saw a moment ago, and the lovely red brand new Ixus 165 which is hopefully going to do a reasonable job at being a secondary backup camera. And this will also serve as a quite usable demonstration of how this uh, new microphone setup is going to sound uh, in the way I usually use this uh, video camera, which is uh, with it sitting on a tripod and me speaking to it about uh, 
40 centimeters behind it or so. So I hope you enjoyed this video. Thank you for watching. Cheerio.